tonight. Are you blessed and highly flavored? <laughs> you got to be blessed and highly flavored because you're the salt. Oh, glory. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> God's got a plan. Amen. Would you grab your swords, please? And turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Verse 3, Matthew 24 and verse 3. Before we get going, I want to share a vision while we are worshiping. And what I saw was this arena of the natural realm and all of a sudden it opened up and in this area of opened up arena of the natural realm he said I want everyone to step through so I want everyone to stand up we're going to step through tonight because we're leaving the old and he said, and when I saw myself, I first saw myself stepping through. See, I didn't know what was coming, and I didn't have to know. My command that was given to me is step through. See, everybody wants to always have to try to know what's coming. And there are things that God reveals to us, and we'll talk about this tonight. But we're going to all step through tonight. So I want everyone to lift up your right leg. And step forward and step through. Now, don't look back. And I want you to just say, I'm letting go. I'm letting go. And I'm stepping in the other realm. The, other realm. the realm where there's no time. No space. No bondage. No bondage. But, freedom. but freedom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That is a prophetic move. It is prophetic. See, things happen in movement. When there's a move, there's a shift, and there's a change. And we are in a change right now. There's, a, there's something happening that is extraordinary. It, it, literally extraordinary. And I don't want to miss it. Oh, glory. <laughs> Remember that we talked about time. Time is a m movement. It's a positional movement that releases an event. Time is a positional movement that releases an event because it's God's time. God's time always has, see, time is always moving, isn't it? God is moving. In fact, the whole universe is moving through eternity. <laughs> so, in this, time is a, a positional movement of God that releases an event. And, and we don't want to miss these things that are happening right now. There's a whole other realm that is opening. And we've got to begin to walk in this area. See it. Taste it. Live it. No longer of the past anymore. Everything of the new. And we feed the new with the new. So we stay new. 
In Matthew 24 and verse 3, would you read it with me? Now he, Jesus, sat on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. And this is representation of the end of the age of grace. In other words, he's actually a asking, uh, what is the next end time result? See, because end time results are associated with an event that's been released. Is everybody with me? Okay. Jesus always spoke of end time results. Always. Because he was always trying to get his people to live in the future. So if you know what the end time results are, you can live in the future. And by living in the future, you are able to make better decisions in the present. If you know what the end time result is. Jesus' desire was that we lived in the future, not in the past. Again, if you live in the past to the present, you're in bondage. If you live from the future to the present, you're in the, you walk in the spirit. So they were asking him when the end of the age was, which is the end of the age of grace, or when does this end time event, this end time result going to happen? And in verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. What end? The end time result. He always reveals an end. In fact, you can read the, all the letters in the book of Revelation, and he always reveals what the end result is going to be. And how people will not live from the past, but live from the future and make their decisions from the future in the present. Is everybody okay? For nations, verse 7, for nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Have these, these are end time events, aren't they? These are end time results, aren't they? Have they occurred? Yes. Yes. Why? Because we're seeing these things being revealed and released in our lifetime. It's being released in our lifetime. Right now, we are seeing it. In fact, the beginning of sorrows is almost completed. Let's go a little further. It says, then they will deliver you up to what? Tribulation. Tribulation. And will kill you. Are there people being killed for being Christians right now? All over the world. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Are there a lot of religions popping up? Oh man, you should see the new age stuff that's coming up. It's incredible. And because lawlessness will abound and the love of money will grow cold. A love of many will grow cold, not money. That seems never to grow cold. <laughs> the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house, and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babes in those days, and pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be what? Great tribulation. Such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor no, nor shall ever be. So are these end time results? Yes. And it says, unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be what? 
shortened. Then if anyone says you look, then here is Christ or there, don't believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand, therefore, if they say to you, look, he's in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he's in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For the light, as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wh wh wherever the carcass is there, the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and a moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Now, I want you to understand something. He says, after tribulation. He first talked about the beginning of the sorrows, tribulation, and great tribulation, didn't he? So he says, now, after tribulation, so what has he done? He's gone back. But he's re releasing to me and you end time results. So he says, after tribulation, these things are going to begin to happen. These things, because after tribulation, after the tribulation, which is three and a half years, then there's great tribulation. Then the sun, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming out of the clouds, having the power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a what? Trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Hallelujah. That's the rapture. He's releasing end time results, isn't he? These are end time results that are happening. And there's something vitally important that we must begin to ask the Lord. What is the end time result of the event in your life? What's the end time result of of the decision you're about to make. What's the end time? Why? Because we must begin to see the end time result so we can make the correct decision now. Too many believers are living by assumption and not seeing the end time result. We've got a teaching called seeing it through, hearing it through. How about willing it through? But we're going to call it end time results. End time results are vitally important. Look at this, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Is everybody there? Oh, we're moving fast tonight. Because in the spirit, there's no space or time. <laughs> in verse 1, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you. What's the gathering together to him? The rapture. Not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. We're seeing many fall away right now. It's being exposed all over the body. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what res is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time? Of course, he's talking about the Antichrist. But at this time, when he reveals himself, he will be Satan. The Antichrist will, full, will rule during tribulation, the first three and a half years. Satan will rule the second part of tribulation, which is called great tribulation for three and a half years. So in this right now, what is he saying? The only thing that's restraining him from doing truly what he wants to do is the body of Christ that's still left here on the earth. And verse 6, and now you, uh, and verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he, see that's capital, 
who now restrains will do so until he is what? Taken out of the way. Well, Jesus is never going to be taken out of the way, nor God. But his body will be removed. That's taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will eventually will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan. He does not say antichrist, does he? It will be Satan. With all power, sound, and signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be what? So the end result is many will be left behind because they chose not to love the truth. They chose not to love the truth. This is an end time result. Not only is the rapture an end time result, because God speaks to me and you in the areas of end time results and brings us to the present so we make the right decisions. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Go to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Hallelujah. End time results. Verse 13. All glory. Let's speak it. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in, he in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together or taken out of the way or raptured with, him, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. So therefore comfort one another with these words. What are we comforting one another with? End time results. Here's the end. Here's the end. See, so many people are so focused on everything else. But first... You focus on what is the end result. You see the end result. And then you bring into focus what you're to do to match the end result. If you're not matching the end result, you are not in divine order. Has everybody got it? Everybody okay? Go to Daniel 12. Hallelujah. In verse 1, Daniel 12, 1. And at that time, Daniel shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a, a time of trouble such as never was seen there was on a nation. Even so, the, even to that time and to the time your people shall be delivered at that time. Everyone who has found where? Written in the book. What book? Book of Light. Is that an end time result? So if your name's not. In other words, when you die, you're, everybody's name's written in the book of life until your last breath. And that determines whether it stays or it's gone or it's removed. Depending on who you serve because who you serve when you die is where you go. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. In other words, this is an end time 
result, isn't it? Amen? Go to Romans 6. Romans chapter 6. In verse 12, it says what? Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under what? You are under grace, which is God's plan. It's no longer according to the law. It's God's plan, right? Go to verse 20. It says, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we see another end result. The wages of sin is what? Death. So if you see that it's the end result is death, don't you think you need to do something about it? If you're in sin... Amen? <laughs> well, you sure would hope so. <laughs> and Matthew 13. All glory. Matthew 13 and verse 40. Oh, it's good to hear the pages flying on a Tuesday night. <laughs> Let's speak it together. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that, uh, that what? Offend. And those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. And there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. And he who has ears to hear, let him what? Hear. So we see again. Another end result. All of these things God speaks by end results. Go to uh, Matthew 7. And verse 22 or 21. Matthew seven twenty one. Let's speak it together. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So do you have to do his will? Amen. 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. You know, God says, I don't hear a prayer of a sinner until he finally comes to repentance or turns from his ways. But I hear a prayer of a worshiper because one who worships is one who's a seeker. And if you're truly a seeker, you have a humble spirit who says, Lord, forgive me. 
Amen? So this is another what? And result, isn't it? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Second Timothy chapter three and verse one. But know this that in the last days perilous times will come. In other words, there'll be end time results, weren't there? He says that for men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control or control over self, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people do what? Turn away. Why? Because if you're hanging with these individuals and you're approving of what they're doing, you'll be judged just the way they are. Amen? He says, turn away from them. Why? Here's an end result. It's destruction. Remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? Amen? See, in this, we've got to come to a place where we're willing to step out of I syndrome. Me, myself, and I. We must step out of I syndrome. It's no longer what I want. It's no longer what I feel. It's no longer what I desire. It's no longer about me. It's about you. It's always about you. See, because if it's truly about him, I hear a lot of people tell me, you know, I want to get back to my relationship with the Lord. Or if you're in a terrible situation, your relationship with the Lord wasn't there anyways. But I knew the Lord really good then. You couldn't have. Because if you truly knew the Lord really good, then you wouldn't have done what you did. Amen? Does everybody get it? What God's trying to do is bring you to a place where you know him. Because when you truly know him, truly know him. Abide in him. The word says abide in him, and he'll abide in you. Where there's that relationship, you won't break covenant. You just won't break covenant. I didn't say you won't make mistakes, but you will not break covenant with the king of glory because you know him. And you won't let anything get between you and him if you truly know him. If you don't know him, you'll allow things to come in. If you don't know him. So you can say you know him. You can think you know him. The devil can even convince you that you know him. And because you know him, you can do this. No. No. We never want to go back to our relationship. We want to go forward in it. Amen? Because that's a ploy of the enemy. What's he trying to do? Bring you back, isn't he? Even in relationship with God, he's trying to bring you back. We never want to go back. We always want to go forward, no matter what. You start it brand new. You start it brand new. Amen? Amen? You start it brand new. You start over. So everybody got this? Or else the enemy's going to bring you back. You're going to try and get back to that relationship which you fell from anyways. We don't go back. We are not living from the past. We are living from the future. And it's something that we must always hold on to. Praise God. Oh, Hallelujah. Romans 2. Do we do second? Wait, wait. Cool. Thank you. Romans 2. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans chapter 2. Is everybody okay? In verse 1. Let's speak it together, please. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who 
judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the what? Same thing. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, which means turn away and run? <laughs> run to him. But in accordance with your hardness and your impeding heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath and the day of wrath and revelation of the ju righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Now he's going to release end time results. What does he say? Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. Okay, it's an end time result, isn't it? But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness and indig indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of a man who does evil of the Jew first and also the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. So he releases another end time result. See, where there's truly a relationship with the Lord, and again, we got to grab hold on this, where there's truly a relationship with the Lord, a relationship with the Lord is in the spirit. It's not in a carnal arena. You cannot have a relationship with God in carnal, carnal arena because you always have a sense that you can never complete him. So everybody got it? But in the spirit, he's already pleased. You don't have to prove yourself to God. He's already pre-approving you. Stamped. Poof, approved. It comes. Poof. You're approved already. But what he's asking you to do now, because you've been approved already, because if you've been called, you've been approved, is now to get in divine order. But in this relationship in the spirit... If truly that relationship and walking in the spirit with the king of glory who is spirit, you will see end time results. You'll know the end. Doesn't the Bible tell us that? The anointing tells us all things to come. We'll know the end time result of every decision, everything that we do. It doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. Does everybody got it? We'll get more into this. But we must begin to acknowledge and recognize the end time result. That last event that was going to occur for everything that we do. Amen. In First Pete chapter 4. First Peter chapter four. Is everybody there? Amen. First Peter chapter four. And verse one. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of man, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so everybody see that? For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the, in the spirit. 
Go to verse 12. So, beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Then their part, on their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, an addict, a harlot, a an adulterer, a homosexual, and all the rest of the things. You know, there's many people who say, I'm suffering for Jesus. Well, you're sinning. You're going to suffer. It ain't Jesus that's causing you to suffer. It's the devil that's beating you up. So come out of the sin. And suffer the right way, not the wrong way. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 16. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him what? Glorify God in this manner. For the time has come for judgment to begin where? In the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as a faithful creator. In other words, there's a difference between suffering towards the, for the will of God and suffering for the will of man. There's two different things, isn't there? So in this, if we're willing to see the end result, you know, uh, I see so many people that, um, you know, a, a addiction is a, is an evil spirit. And it's our responsibility to uh, make no place for the devil. And when people think that they get set free, okay, so I don't drink no more. Well, uh, uh, and, and I don't use drugs anymore. Okay, great, but I, I smoke cigarettes. Well, that's another spirit that's allowed in. That person is not free. Well, or, or pornography or fornication. There's still an exchange of addiction, that's all it is. Or dip. People don't even realize that dip is an open door. Why? Because it's the spirit of nicotine. Do not touch unclean things. Amen? Come out from among them. Touch nothing unclean. All of these things alter a person's thought pattern and don't even realize it. It opens the door to the enemy. Because they're not seeing the end result. Okay, if I take this, what's the end result? If I do this, what's the end result? Man, I'm telling you, we'd be all a lot freer, don't you think, if we saw the end result? Then we can make the correct decision right now. Hallelujah. We wouldn't need this Bible study if we had that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. And verse 8. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. In other words, if he's the Alpha and Omega, he's talking about a beginning and an end, isn't he? But it's amazing in how he always speaks in the area of the end time result. He always shares with about the end time result. That's why in the book of Revelation he says, and he who has an ear, let him hear. Here's the end time result. If you do this, here's the end time. Here, here this is what, okay. So he's always given us correction counsel. You know, it says that, uh, judgment is in the house of God. And why is there judgment in the house of God? First of all, judgment comes because correct, uh, conviction was rejected. When conviction is rejected, God 
brings chastening. When chastening is rejected, then comes judgment. When judgment is rejected, then wrath. And that's when we know we're, we're hanging on by a thread. And that's when the, the, you know, God's trying to speak to us in every way possible to get us to turn from where we're at because we have lost sight of the end time result. You know, um, there are turn of events in, in, in everyone's life. And these turn of events is a, 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 it's a something that, it's a movement of God that releases something in our life. Um, there's, you know, we may have to make decisions of education, health, things that we eat. If people would see things all the way through. Again, if you're going to eat Twinkies every day, you're going to become a Twinkie. Amen? If there's certain things that, you, if people would begin to see the end result of everything that they do, they would live a totally different lifestyle. Because they would know the end result. They would make a decision according to the end result. That's why Jesus said, I don't do anything unless I see my father do it first. Why? Because he saw the end result. Then he did it. That's why he's the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. And so if there's a beginning, there's a end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 5. I mean Mark chapter 5. Glory. Mark chapter 5. And verse 25. Mark 5, 25. Is everybody there? Let's speak this together, please. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be what? Well, did she see an end time result? Amen. She saw the end time result of what was going on. Immediately, the um, fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in, in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Verse 30. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Now, you know, everybody was bouncing off of him. But there was only one that saw the end time result. So she knew what she had to do. She made a decision that she saw the end time result. If I get through this crowd, which she probably crawled on her hands and knees, she was weak, dying, and all these people around bouncing off of Jesus, trying to grab hold of him and asking questions, do this, do that, whatever. But only one, only one woman was going to him for that specific reason because she saw the end time result and it was to touch his garment, and she knew that she would be healed. And Jesus turned around and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? <laughs> and he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now that is powerful. Powerful. Why? Because she saw the end time result. Go to Romans 12. 
and she made the decision according to what the end time result was. Romans chapter 12. Oh, great is the Lord and worthy to be praised. In verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. Verse 2. Here we go. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. This is the process of his will. In other words, we talked about hearing it through, seeing it through, willing it through. In other words, in this will, his will is always associated with end time results. In fact, the word says when you complete his will he releases the promise so there's always something he asks you to do when he asks you to do it you see it when you obey his will he releases his promise the process of his will and willing it through in other words there's the good there's the acceptable and there's the perfect the perfect the perfect will means complete the word perfect means is associated with complete all process starts with good. There's everything that you and I do starts off with this goodwill. And then it goes to the acceptable. And then it goes to the perfect. There is that process. Everything, things are released in our life. We begin to see end time results. Before, let me give you uh, an example. Before a, a, a painting is established, the person that's getting ready to get the painting has already seen the picture. Amen. He's already seen the picture because it's been revealed to him. That's how God speaks to me and you. In fact, he speaks to me and you through vision more than anything. Impression and vision. Impression and vision. Because he's always an impressing a vision. But if we're too dull, we won't see it. If we're too carnal, too fleshy, too much living out of the soul, we miss it. So in this, he impresses and when he impresses, we see something. And again, it's just like an artist who's, or anyone who paints something, they see the painting. And this artist that has seen this painting already first begins to make certain adjustments. That's the good. And as he's going and going, he does the outline and so forth and begins to put in certain the big buildings, whatever it may be. Then he begins to do detail. That's acceptable. All the way till it's completed and perfect. That's the three wills of God. And everything that we do that God has for me and you, it always starts off with good, acceptable, then goes to perfect. It's just like in anything. When you are in training of something, if you go to school, you're always starting off with the good, acceptable, and perfect. Whether you're in business, you know, the Bible says don't despise small beginnings. Whatever it is, you begin to start off good. You're getting things together, but, but you're seeing an end result. You have a vision and a goal of an end result. And in, even in that end result, you'll know when it's time to stop what you're doing. Now, you may not know what God's getting ready to do next, but sometimes he doesn't reveal it to you until you complete what he started. So everybody got it. I know that the Lord with myself, he doesn't always show me everything. In other words, he shows me an end result of something. Now, I don't know how it's going to happen. So he says, I'll meet you there. Then he'll say, go here. I'll meet you there. Okay. And when I go there, things begin to happen. Okay, what do we do next? Go here. Didn't he say the same thing to Saul who became Paul? He said, get up and go into the place called Straight. And I'll meet you there. He does it with all of his children. And Paul couldn't see nothing. But he did in a vision. He saw a man coming and laying hands on him, didn't he? 
because he was physically blinded, but he was not spiritually blinded. And he knew that this man was going to come and lay hands on him to restore his sight. So he saw the end result, didn't he? So he obeyed. Does everybody understand this? And this is a critical time that we begin to see the end result. So our decisions now will coordinate and fulfill that end result. Amen? Oh, glory. And again, it goes by the process of good, acceptable, and perfect. Perfect means complete. Let's go on. When you completed something, he's got another thing. Everything that he asks you to do, there's always a good, acceptable, and perfect. When it's completed, let's go. What's next? You know, the word says what you sow is what you... Isn't reaping an end result? <laughs> That's a spiritual law from God Almighty. It's an end result. <laughs> go to uh, Habakkuk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 2. Is everybody there? Habakkuk chapter 2. End time results. In verse 1, let's speak this together. I will stand my watch. What is a watch? Somebody who stand and watch to. Just looking. I set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the what? Vision or the what? End time result. Does everybody got it? And make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for a what? An appointed time. In other words, God is going to release this event according to his time in, from the, in the, the natural realm, isn't he? But at the end, it will what? For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, it will what? It's going to speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not what? Terry. Now look at the next verse. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Because faith is spiritual sight. Oh, hallelujah. So we see here, living from the end time result is living from the future. We must begin to live from the future. Not from the past. So everybody got it. You know, we've, even in some of the uh, things that we've uh, made mistakes on, we saw the end results, didn't we? So we don't make the same mistake because we already saw the end result. Because we already experienced that event. And we don't have to experience it again, God willing. And, but man willing would do it. God willing would say no. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Philippians 3. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody getting this? Philippians chapter 3 
verse 8, uh, verse 7. Philippians 3, 7. Let's speak it together, please. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may what? Know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I what? I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. Now, what's he talking about? Living from the future. Have the mind of living from the future. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the what? Same mind. Same mind. Vitally important. You know, when anything that you start, you always see it, the end result. Everything you start, there's an end result. The thing is, is so many times we try to jump to the end result without going through the good acceptable. Has everybody got it? That's how God trains us. This is how God uh, positions us. This is how he begins to reach. This is how he sets up relationships. That's how he does certain things. But the enemy always try to interfere with us so that we live in the soul or in the flesh and we're not seeing this all the way through. Because it's what I want instead of what God wants. Go to Revelation 22. Here's an end result. Oh, yeah. And verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's read this together. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs, sorcerers, and sexual immoral and murderers and idolaters. Whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David the bright and the morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. That is an end result. Again, I got a lot more, but I think this is sufficient. It's time to start living from the future. We cannot be tricked anymore or deceived anymore living from the past. Quit trying to rebuild your past. 
You can't. If you try to rebuild it, it will fail every time. If you'll get your eyes off of yourself and your eyes off of your past, step into the future, see the end result, and make your decision according to the end result. Lord, what are you showing me? Lord, allow me to see the end result. And then you make your decision. Amen? Amen. Man, we'd be a lot more like-minded if everybody would do this. Do not live for you anymore. Live for him. We were bought with a price. All end results are associated with expanding the kingdom of God and bringing him glory. They're an end result of blessing. They're an end result of rescue. And the end result of peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't let the devil steal your future. If you're living in it, he can't. Because he can't go past that line that separates the past from the future. He's stuck in the past. So he tries to draw you from the, past, from the future into the past. Don't let him do it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Praise God. So, Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed in the revelation of impartation tonight. I pray, Lord, to be protected and used. Lord, quicken us to your remembrance, to the remembrance of this impartation, that we may see it through and the end time results who make our decisions according to your will and way. Again, I want to thank everyone for listening. For more teachings and resources, please visit us at eternallibrary.org. And everyone said, Amen. 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 I want to thank all the listeners and the viewers. And for more teachings and resources, please visit us at eternallibrary.org. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and heal you and uplift you because you're a new creation in Christ. And old things have passed away and all things are made new in Christ Jesus.